All right, so we continue our work with systems of equations and solving systems of linear equations. Last class, we were talking about how a system was when you have two equations and you're looking for the solution that works for both of them at the same time, which in a graph represent, is represented by the intersection of the two lines. In a table, it's represented by the same value that shows up in both tables. Uh, today, we're going to be talking a little bit about how to substitute one equation into the other or to substitute a variable or expression into an equation to solve the system. And there is a couple methods that are like that are, that are a little bit more algebraic. And so we're going to start off by talking about the one called the substitution method. But before that, let's just talk about uh, the system that we see down below here. Uh, so here are graphs of two equations in a system. All right, see the blue line and the black line. And notice that they are crossing each other. And the question that we're supposed to answer is, determine if each of these systems could be represented by the graphs. Explain how you know. In other words, each one of these situations down here has two equations, first equation and second equation, a first equation and a second equation. So two equations are in each one of these. And so the question is, are those equations shown by the lines that are up here? Okay. And, you know, last class when we were talking about the graphs, one way of figuring that out is to take a look at that intersection point. In other words, that X and Y value. And if that X, Y value works in both of the equations, like if we put the X value in for X and the Y value in for Y and it comes out to eight. And if we put in, we know the X value is negative five, then, then it works. So we could try the x and the y value in each one of the equations and see if it works. However, in this situation, we don't have we have we don't really know what this number is. There's no scale down here on the x-axis or y-axis. So we don't actually know, you know, we can come up with a reasonable estimate. We know they're both positive values, um, but we don't really know. So how else can we figure that out? Well, maybe you could pause here and and think about how you would figure it out, like which one of these systems down below, A, B, C, or D, could be represented with these two lines. Um, what I am noticing here is that we have this, this blue line is a vertical line. All right, it's a line that goes straight up and down. And when you have a vertical line, we know that the equation for the line is always an X equals equation. Because let's just say the x value right here is 5. All right? So that means every point on the line has an x value of 5. So a vertical line always has the same x value. So whenever you have a vertical line, it's going to be an x equals equation. The slope will be undefined because it's a vertical line. And in this case it has a positive x value. We know that because we can see down below here that this is in the first quadrant, that this is a po it's on the positive x-axis over here, not over here on the negative x-axis. So, so we know a little bit of information about that. What about the other line? What about this line? Okay, what do we know about that? Well, we do know a few general things. We know that that has a positive y-intercept. And we also know that it's sloping in a negative direction. It's going downhill, right? So... So it's positive y-intercept and has a negative slope. So even without any, without knowing any numbers, we do know some information about those two lines. And so let's see if we can use that information down below and see if any of these could work. All right, so let's look at A here. And A, okay, look at this. It has an x equals negative 5. 
All right, if it was x equals negative 5 for one of the lines, then like I said before, that would be a vertical line because it's an x equals equation, but it would be way over here when x is negative 5. And that's not what we have. So we can just cross that one off right away. Um, let's look at b here. It's going to look, okay. So this has a negative slope and a positive y-intercept, so that's that's possible. We talked about that uh, in the red line that has a negative slope and a positive y-intercept. But the second equation is y equals negative 1. Okay, so if it's y equals negative 1, that means that you're going to have a horizontal line instead of a vertical line. If you just have a y equals equation, that's going to be a horizontal line. And in this case, it's going to be a horizontal line down here at negative 1 on the y-axis. Now, neither one of our lines up here are horizontal lines. They don't go straight across. The red line and the blue line, neither one of them is horizontal, let alone a negative one. So we can eliminate that one for sure. Okay, so we can eliminate a couple of those right off the bat. Um, let's see here. Looking at a couple of the other ones. All right, I'm just going to look at this one. I'm going to skip over to D for a sec. I'm just kind of scanning to see if there's anything easy that I can eliminate. Uh, look at this guy right here. So this equation, notice, has a positive slope. This one is in a y equals mx plus b form. And it has a negative y-intercept. So that line right there has a positive slope and a negative y-intercept. And I know my red line up here is the opposite of that. It has a positive y-intercept and a negative slope. And my blue line is an x equals equation. So I know it does. So I know that there's no line up there that has a positive slope and a negative y-intercept. So I can cross that one off too. So I'm just kind of using a little bit of my um, criterion B recognizing patterns skills right here, you guys. I haven't really done much number crunching yet at all. I'm just trying to like analyze this a little bit and kind of like a multiple choice test and eliminate the wrong answers. And I'm hoping that this letter C is the right answer because that's the only one that we have left. Um, well, let, let's just take a look at it though, just to verify, maybe not assuming it. I'm gonna take a look at this equation right here. Now this is three X equals eight. Now I know one of my equations has to be a vertical line with an x equals equation and it's a positive x value. Well, if I want to get x by itself here, I can do that pretty quickly because this is 3 times x equals 8. So if I want to solve for x here, if I want to undo the 3, I'm going to do the opposite of multiplying, which is to divide both sides by 3. And now I get x is equal to 8 divided by 3. 8 thirds, which by the way is 2.6 repeating. So that is an x equals equation, and it does have a positive x value. So this one right here, if, if that's true, then what that really means up here on our graph is that this on the x-axis right here is at 2.6. So x equals 2.6. That's what that means. And that could very well be the case because I have no idea what the scale is, but I know that that's positive. So that could work. All right. Um, let's look at the second one, the second line right here. Um, I know that my second line has to have a positive y-intercept and a negative slope. So let's get that into y equals mx plus b form and see what we get. So 3x plus y equals 15. And so if I want to get y by itself, and so it's in y equals mx plus b, I'm going to move that whole 3x, the whole 3x over to the other side by subtracting the whole thing over to the other side. So it cancels out that, so now I have y equals 15 minus 3x. All right, does that work? Well, the number that's on its own is the y-intercept, so the y-intercept is positive 15, and the slope is negative 3. Does that match up? I needed my line up here. I needed to have a positive y-intercept, which I did have. And if this is the line right here that I just figured out, then that must be 15 because that my y-intercept is 15. And then it also had to have a negative slope, which this def definitely does have. So uh, slope of negative 3? Sure, why not? 
Um, I don't have my rise over run that I can see because I don't have a scale here, but that very well could have a slope of negative three. For sure it has a negative slope. And so that seems to check off all the boxes. And so C would have to be the answer to this. Determine if these systems could be represented by these graphs. Yes, part C does because it fits the qualifications that I stated up here with um, the vertical line and uh, an x value that is positive, and then the other line has to have a positive y-intercept and a negative slope.